In this video, I want to quickly address a common question that a lot of beginners have when they first learn about amino acids. And that is whether there are eight or nine essential amino acids. It's kind of confusing depending on what textbook you read because you will hear both. So you will hear some saying that there are eight essential amino acids, and then you will have some saying that there are nine essential amino acids. So in this video, I want to explain what gives and why both are technically correct. Okay, to get started, here's a list of the 21 amino acids that are commonly found in our diet and in our bodies. Just as a side note, selenocysteine is a more recently discovered amino acid, so some old textbooks will not note it. And they will say that there are only 20 total amino acids found in our diet. So what you need to know is that there's three groups of amino acids. First, you have the essential amino acids. Those are the amino acids that your body cannot make itself, so it needs to get them through your diet. Next, you have the non-essential amino acids. They can be synthesized by the body from other amino acids. And third, you have the conditionally essential amino acids. Those become essential in times of stress or, for example, when you're sick. As you can see from the list, the group of essential amino acids has nine entries. So this is where the notion of nine essential amino acids comes from. But why then do some sources say that there are only eight essential amino acids? Well, this has to do with the fact that the last entry on the list, which is histidine, and this amino acid is especially important for human growth, it, it is only essential in infants, children, and people with impaired kidney function. So for healthy adults, it actually becomes non-essential later on in life. So to make a long story short, the answer to the question of why some people say there's eight and why some people say there's nine essential amino acids has to do with histidine and that it is only essential in infants, in children, and in people with impaired kidney function. For everyone else, it's non-essential. 